Hello you, hello traveler, and welcome back to the Definitely Greece channel. This is our second video of our four part mini series on ancient Greece. And as always, although these videos have a historical interest, they're not just for the history lovers. They're there to inspire you for your next trip to Greece. Today, we're gonna talk about women. As we all know, traditionally, history has been written by men and celebrates mostly men. And although Greek mythology is full of amazing female figures, the stories of real women of ancient Greece hardly ever survive. So we're gonna explore the four stories of four incredible women that undoubtedly changed the course of history. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and bell button for more awesome content about everything Greece and let's dive into it. lady we're gonna talk about today is a lady named Aspasia. Aspasia lived in the 5th century BC in Athens. This is a time in Athenian history that there's incredible wealth and is known as the golden age of Athens. Aspasia was the second wife of the famous Pericles who ruled Athens at the time and famously commissioned the creation of the Parthenon. Talking of the Parthenon, check out this video if you haven't seen part one of this series. So why was Aspasia so important? Because Aspasia was not originally from Athens, but had immigrated there, something that was known as being a medicos, or an immigrant, you could say. Historians believe that she might have enjoyed some freedoms and liberties that women in Athens traditionally would not have. Most of what we know about Aspasia today is through the writings of Xenophon, Plato, and Antisthenes. They wrote about her not only because she would end up having an immense amount of influence over the Athenian elite, but also because she could commonly converse with Socrates, one of the most famous philosophers in history and also at the time. Many of the political decisions he made at the time were thought to be greatly influenced by her and her heritage, but also a lot of his famous political speeches that moved Athens and have survived history are thought to be partly written by her. In their house, a lot of the Athenian elite would congregate, which during their 20-year-old partnership would bring Aspasia very close to some of the most important figures of classical Greece. At times, Pericles would be actually threatened that if he continued to stay under the same roof as Aspasia, he would be ostracized or expelled from Athens. And although the historical record is not that clear of how much of this is myth or reality, the several mentions of Pericles' critics saying he would often choose a life of pleasure over a life of virtue seem to suggest that it was probably true. However, her Socratic dialogues survive until today and she is thought to have paved the way for women to not only become philosophers, but to also be seen as intellectual figures and leaders. Which brings us to the second story of today. The second story is not about one specific woman, but mostly a whole tribe of them, known as the Amazons. The Amazons for many years were thought to be a figment of the ancient Greek imagination and mythology created to portray ancient Greek heroes as more heroic and the perfect villains to their stories. The Amazons were thought to be a fierce, ruthless and bloodthirsty tribe of warrior women. They were thought to be masters at horse riding and archery. And even their name, Amazon, vaguely reminiscing of the ancient Greek word translating to without breast seem to have sparked the myth that the Amazons would cut the right breast to not interfere with their archery skill. However, again, these are just myths. <laughs> More than that, the Amazons were thought to be very harsh on men, only using them to procreate and abandoning their male babies. However, recent findings have found that although this northern tribe of warrior women was very much a real thing, the myths that the ancient Greeks had crafted around them may perhaps have been a little bit exaggerated. Recently, a burial site in Western Russia uncovered several graves of what was thought to be male skeletons. Not only the skeletons bore signs of somebody that would have participated many times in battle during their life, but also culturally, everything suggested that the funeral rites given to these bodies would suggest they were men. No surprise here, with some more research, they found out that these skeletons actually did belong to women. Several excavations in the greater region have 
piece together the reality of the story of the Amazons. And although through the ancient Greek writings, the only part that survives, unfortunately, is the mythology and not the reality, these archaeological findings show that the Greeks not only considered them a dangerous enemy, they also assumed that because these women were fighters, in simple words, would be as bad as men. And you can still find fragments of their story today in museums through the beautiful artworks that survive until today. Drop in the comments below if you have any suggestions about our Ancient Greece series and if there is any particular character, hero or villain of Ancient Greece that you would like to know more of. Which brings us to the third story of today, which is about a lady known as Kiniska. I was pretty shocked to actually find out about Kiniska because although we are taught Greek history for so many years, her story has seemed to totally escape me. So who was Kiniska? She was a Spartan princess around 400 BC. What would make her famous in history is the fact that she would become the first ever female Olympian. Now I know what you're thinking. The Olympics were completely closed to women. Women were not allowed to participate and were not allowed to be their spectators and very harsh punishments would be given to anyone that tried to define those rules. However, there was a little trick. The charity events were open to women as long as the role was limited to the fact that they would either train or breed the horses. Kimiska, being a young woman of great influence and wealth, combined with her love for horses, would eventually negotiate her participation to the games and to the shock of everyone would actually win. What's most shocking of all is not that she would win once, but she would actually go on to repeat the feat four years later and actually win two Olympic titles in 392 and 396 BC. Researching about Kiniska's story has actually led me to find out that there may have been other women that have also won the ancient Greek Olympics, although their stories have not survived like hers. It is also important to note that in the city-state of Sparta, women did enjoy traditionally more rights than other Greek city-states. Spartan women would have the rights to inherit and own property, were considered the heads of the households, were given incredible honor as mothers and wives, but would also be encouraged to participate in sports from a young age, marry later, and dress a lot more liberally than other Greek city-states. Of course, this was mostly to the fact that ancient Sparta was an ultra-militaristic society, and the male duties were primarily go to war. So the women that stayed behind had a lot more roles and duties than women elsewhere in Greece. And to finish for today, our last story, we're going back to ancient Athens. This time we're talking about Agnodiki. Her story is a beautiful tale of perseverance and female power, and she is remembered in history as some say the first female physician, gynecologist, or perhaps midwife. Agnodiki wanted to pursue a career as a doctor. Although traditionally women in labor were tended to by midwives, with the advent of evidence-based medicine through the school of Hippocrates, women were actually pushed away from medicine. Agnodiki would decide to pursue her career, although she was legally not allowed to. She would dress as a man and attend the school of Herophilus. Herophilus is known as the father of anatomy, and he was the first person in history to use the poles for medical purposes. After graduating, Agnodiki would go on to attend to women in labor. She found that they were very hesitant to trust male physicians, and her presence in the room would make them more relaxed. She would reveal herself to them and show them that she too was a woman and would earn their trust. And that way, she helped many Athenian women deliver their babies. However, as every story has it, Agnodiki would be found out and put into trial. The wives of many Athenian wealthy men would break into the courtroom and demand not only that Agnodiki was acquitted, but also that the law would be changed. Again, sadly, we don't know how much of Agnodiki's story is truth or myth. However, knowing that ancient Greeks found those stories important enough to record and write down showed that they understood their significance. And they're wonderful examples of how in any culture, in any part of the world, no, no matter how far back you go, women have been an incredible power to be reckoned with. I really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you haven't checked part one of our mini-series on ancient Greece, check out this video and head to the description below for two wonderful articles on ancient Greek women. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hope to see you in Greece soon!